You might remember not long ago, we talked about uh, one of the updates on the Tyson and other food processing plants ongoing saga when it comes to COVID. Now, that has been a very complicated story that has resulted in thousands of people getting sick, many people dying. One of the most individually horrible components of it, though, was when we found out not long ago that some of the managers at the Tyson Waterloo plant had actually had some sort of pool going, betting on how many of their own employees would end up getting COVID. Now, some of those managers have been fired, so that's good news. Although the idea that like Tyson executives would fire the particular managers when they were almost certainly following the guidelines of Tyson executives seems wrong fundamentally, but hey, that's American capitalism. Um, now though, one of those managers that was fired is speaking out in support of the pool that they were running. So this is Don Mershbrock, a former night manager at the plant in Waterloo, said he was speaking in an attempt to show that the seven fired supervisors are not the evil people that Tyson has portrayed. Quote, we really want to clear our names. We actually worked very hard and took care of our team members well. Uh, county officials said last May, so this is just as of May, that more than 1,000 workers tested positive for the virus, which hospitalized several and killed at least six. They blasted Tyson for not initially providing workers ad adequate protective gear and for idling the plant only after the outbreak had ripped through the city. So they decided to keep it going as long as possible so they could make money off of like 20,000 hogs that they process every single day while forcing their employees to stand without PPE shoulder to shoulder on this line for as long as possible so they could make as much money as possible. Because what you want in a food processing plant during a pandemic is for a lot of people to be around a lot of food that's being shipped all over the country. So that's what they did. Now, managers conducting the office pool last spring, apparently within minutes following mass testing of the plant's roughly 2,800 workers. The office pool involved roughly $50 cash, which went to the winner who picked the correct percentage of workers testing positive for the virus, according to that manager, who again is telling us all of this in defense of himself. He added that those involved didn't believe the pool violated company policy and thought the plant's positivity rate would be lower than the community rate due to their mitigation efforts. Now, the community was very hard hit, in large part because the plant was very hard hit. But we have a little bit more from this. Adrian, what do you think about this defense, the idea that that pool actually wasn't the immoral thing that it's been presented by the media as? It's, it's really unfortunate when you have people like this that are out here saying, we took good care of them. Number one, that's a very paternalistic, white saviorism kind of mindset. The vast majority of these people were brown or are brown. Uh, they were clearly taken advantage of and exploited. If you're willing to bet on whether someone came down with this potentially deadly virus and to create a pool on it, you can't tell me you're actually, you care about those people in any form or fashion. That's sadistic and gross. Yeah, I, like trying to present it as we're doing it because we're like focusing on how low the rate is going to be and it's going to be a morale booster. Like, I don't know, like what, what if, what if you found out that I had done that at TYT, like yeah. taking bets on who would have gotten sick? That, that would just like, seem extremely <laughs> lowly and indicative of poor character. And the problem is we as a society have this kind of dichotomous mindset of good, bad, it has to be one mm -hmm. or the other when it's like, no, people who can be generally good people can do bad things easily. But to try to defend this behavior in any way, that, that's some gall. That's some real gall. And it does speak to the brokenness of the culture there. Um, yeah. But what really gets me, though, is how Tyson didn't order this investigation that led to their termination until the public found out. So somebody yeah. had to file this lawsuit. And then Tyson hires former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder to do to do these investigations and they never released the report of course not but part of me is like did you really need an investigation to figure out that this behavior is unacceptable and to have a lawyer mm -hmm. tell you we recommend terminating them get out of here yeah and it seems it seems weird to like okay so people found out so we're going to do this investigation of these managers and we do it and oh my god we found really bad stuff so bad that we're going to fire these people in a way that those supervisors are now saying was without any explanation so for that to make sense, what they found had to be really bad, right? Yeah. But they don't want to show us anything of what they found, which me as a curious person, I have to assume that what you found is either worse than what we know about or you found additional stuff from what we know about 
in either case, you're not showing it to us, which seems really suspicious. And we're not inclined to give you a lot of goodwill, considering that, like, among all of the horrible things that have happened in this pandemic, from the point of view of private industry, I don't know if anyone has been more irresponsible than these food processing plants. So why would I give you the benefit of the doubt on these investigations that you're now hiding from me? Yeah, exactly. And the thing that also gets me is the fact that there are these wrongful death lawsuits out there now, and that's probably why they're not releasing this information. I'm sure um, the family members of these workers can probably get that information in discovery, but still, I'm sure they would probably want it to be sealed. And also, too, you know, by virtue of hiring a law firm and having them do it, a lot of it gets protected under attorney-client privilege, which is what Tyson was looking for, so that they don't have to turn it over to uh, opposing counsel and so yeah. that they don't have to release it. And it just says, we're not looking for transparency here. We're just looking for someone to have come in, you know, to check a box so we can say we followed rules. We investigated ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And in the meantime, we don't know for sure, but almost certainly lobbying hardcore for the uh, immunity shield against um, any sort of, uh, and retroactive immunity shield, by the way, um, considering, I mean, the number of people that were getting sick and that were dying as of May, which now seems like a million years ago in the pandemic, we're still potentially about to experience even harder times. So you can only imagine. Uh, but finally, I wanted to give one more quote from Don Mershbrock, that former uh, manager who says, it was a group of exhausted supervisors that had worked so hard and so smart to solve many unsolvable problems. It was simply something fun, kind of a morale boost for having put forth an incredible effort. There was never any malicious intent. It was never meant to disparage anyone. Okay. Your message is out there. Wow. Everybody gets to interpret it the way they want. I have a feeling how they're going yeah. to. For real. And yeah. it's something I wrote about in my book, because even though my book is specifically largely about sexual harassment and that kind of bullying in the workplace, all the principles apply because they're all about power plays. So when it comes to violating your civil rights or mistreating you, people will do it out of boredom. And that's mm -hmm. one of the factors that you want to look for in a work environment. Will there be a lot of time of people twiddling their thumbs or having opportunity to just do kind of what they want to do. And if so, those individuals who are in positions of power or who seek power will leverage that to treat you terribly. Yeah. That's just unfortunately how our behavior pattern works as human beings. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, only, the only, like, I guess goodwill I would offer is to say, I have a feeling that the individual plant managers, as I alluded to earlier, are not the biggest villains in this. But you can be judged for the things you did and going along with it, going along with company policies that you have reason to believe are going to get people sick or kill them is not acceptable. Um, and, and someone mentioned in the Twitch chat, a, a component of this I'd forgotten and haven't mentioned here, but we've previously talked about was um, they're talking constantly. Even this manager is talking about how responsible we were. We took these tremendous efforts. We were so smart. We worked so hard. They had a policy that offered a bonus. So there were various companies that had bonuses for people who were working during the initial stages of the pandemic. But the way it worked was you couldn't miss a day for a certain period of time, a certain period of weeks. If you missed one day, you didn't get any of the bonus, which seems tailor-made to get people experiencing symptoms of COVID to go to work anyway, because they don't wanna miss out. Like you should literally be incentivizing sick people to stay home, to not get other people sick, but you're doing the exact opposite. That's not hard work. That's not smart work. That's designed to maximize your profits, even if it results in a lot of dead people.